Hello and welcome everyone. Thank you very much for tuning back in again. This is a Screencast-O-Matic presentation and recording for the part of the lesson that has us looking at the art of protest, the role that propaganda can play in shaping and molding public opinion. Before we get started, please remember that your task for this section is to examine each piece of propaganda, type down a general description from the recording here, and then provide your own analysis. Was this effective in your opinion? Was it not effective? And what made it that way? Let's go ahead and get started with the brief introduction. So the art of protest. When it comes to swaying public opinion, a provocative image can be a powerful tool. Art is for art's sake, goes an old expression. The artist represented on these pages might disagree. They have created works with a message, each image in its own way in an act of protest. These artworks are meant to critique the people and institutions that wield power in our society, such as political parties and corporations. The art tackles a number of issues, from the environment to war to the right to bear arms. Sometimes protest images are tied to particular movements, other times they reflect the particular concerns of their creators. Artists making social statements use a variety of methods to grab the public's attention, but many start with a simple concept, taking a familiar image or idea, then making it surprising by changing it. For example, we need more party animals doesn't include the Republican elephant or the Democratic donkey. The artist seems to be saying that Americans need more choices when it comes to political parties. So this unique image were all, or these unique images were all created to plead, to argue, or maybe even to provoke. Some of them may upset or even offend you, but as acts of protest, their purpose is to make you react and think about the world in a new way. Let's go ahead and get to the first one here, Standing Rock. As you can see, this is the piece of propaganda. And in 2016, members of the Standing Rock Sioux tribe in North Dakota protested construction of an oil pipeline running through Indian land. This art shows a Native American warrior in battle with a serpent that looks like an oil pipeline. Upon closer examination here, you're welcome to use the source and certainly make it bigger, or zoom in on the dock accordingly. Children at War is the next piece of propaganda. Protest images can imitate road signs because their symbols are so widely recognized. In this case, the art comments on young people being forced to serve as soldiers, a horror that most commonly occurs in conflict-ridden African countries. So upon closer examination, you can actually see what the sign says. Caution, children at war, abolish the use of child soldiers worldwide. Children have a right to be children. And that's from Amnesty International. Nike Victim. So part of a series called Fashion Victims, this piece comments on both our love for designer labels, but the horrible labor conditions in some third world factories where many brand name products are made. Upon closer examination here, you can obviously see what this piece of propaganda was meant to bring out. Next here is We Need More Party Animals. This artist playfully alludes to the mascots of major U.S. political parties, the Republican Elephant and Democratic Donkey, without showing them. He seems to believe that the choices of our two-party system gives us or makes us too limited. And upon closer examination, you can see the diverse array of other animals that very well could represent other parties in the future. I am a man. Sometimes the most effective statements are the simplest, and in 1968, black sanitation workers on strike in Memphis, Tennessee carried this sign to assert that they were human beings with rights, not faceless trash haulers. Give mother the vote. Before the 19th Amendment gave the right to vote in 1920, women took to the streets. Here, America's babies insist on doing the right thing for mother. The National Women's Suffrage Publishing Company of U.S. in 1915 was responsible for this ad. And you can see what's on here. Give mother the vote. We need it. <clears throat> our food, our health, our play, our homes, our schools, our work are ruled by men's votes. Isn't it a funny thing that father cannot see why mother ought to have a vote on how these things should be? Think it over. Or is good for business. A really controversial slogan, but using it, this slogan he saw on an anti-Vietnam War button, the artist added the 19th century engravings of a mother and a soldier to emphasize his message that some businessmen were profiting from the war while young Americans were getting killed at an alarming rate. And here's what it says. War is good for business. Invest your son. Gun control. Because criminals follow laws, right? <laughs> Simple but yet powerful piece of propaganda. And here's why. Gun control supporters often say that good laws keep guns out of the hands of bad guys. But this art by an opponent of gun control uses a simple design, bold lettering, and a surprising punchline to make a different point. 
You might have seen this iconic piece of propaganda before, Don't Tread on Me. The flag with the coiled rattlesnake and the slogan Don't Tread on Me was widely used by patriots during the Revolutionary War from 1775 to 83. More recently, the Tea Party movement, a faction of the Republicans that emerged after President Barack Obama's election in 2008, has embraced the symbol and motto as an expression of its resolve to protect individuals' rights from government overreach. Occupy Wall Street In 2011, thousands of people staged a sit-in at a park near New York City's Wall Street. They are protesting against greeting the U.S. financial system and the influence of the 1%, meaning the richest Americans, here symbolized by a figure from the Monopoly's game. And as you can see, it says Occupy Wall Street, we are the 99%. And you can see Wall Street depicted by the Monopoly man right there. GMO food. Many people are worried about genetically modified crops, known as GMOs, in our food supply. This unpleasant image is a warning about the unknown consequences of messing with Mother Nature. As you can see here. School or prison? This poster titled, How Can I Write My Own Future With My Hands Bound, tackles a complex subject, how so many young African American males end up in prison, but the image may suggest that education is a key to freeing this young black man. We are people. This image of a Muslim woman is an American flag hijab headscarf was created for the Women's March as a symbol of diversity and inclusiveness in the US, which many marchers saw as threatened by President Trump's proposals. And says, we the people are greater than fear. All right, guys, so as you can see, those are some eclectic pieces of propaganda. Remember, your goal now is to type your own analysis and descriptions of each piece of propaganda. Uh, please feel free to reach out if you need help on this particular part of the lesson. Good luck in completing the rest of the lesson, too.